This week, big updates in the cannabis industry. The Supreme Court ends a three-year legal challenge against the DEA over the constitutionality of federal cannabis prohibition. Why activists remain optimistic about the lawsuit. Plus, more marijuana industry employees unionize in San Francisco. Our team is on the scene with details on their new contract. Mississippi's governor signs a bill allowing access to certain MMJ medications, but will it hurt the chances of an upcoming medical cannabis legalization ballot proposal? We've got more on the new policy. Meanwhile, another celebrity gets in on the CBD market, launching a line of hemp-derived skincare products. We'll let you know which Hollywood actress is hoping to cash in coming up. Legal recreational sales finally launch in Maine. How much residents spent over the opening weekend? Also, Alberta is getting rid of certain dispensary ownership restrictions, why some business owners are worried about the change. And France releases more specifics on their upcoming two-year medical marijuana experiment. We'll tell you which details officials revealed and more. Welcome to Cannabis Newsroom. I'm Jackie, and these are the top stories we have for you this week. On the domestic front, the Supreme Court declines to hear a case challenging the federal prohibition of marijuana, ending a three-year-long legal battle against the DEA. The initial case, which was filed in 2017 by a group of medical cannabis patients and activists, including former NFL player Marvin Washington, aimed to reschedule cannabis and let states make their own policies regarding its legality. It argued cannabis' Schedule One classification violates the Constitution by designating marijuana as a drug with no medicinal value when the majority of states now have MMJ programs. The plaintiffs petitioned the Supreme Court after rejecting the Second Circuit's advice to attempt to reschedule marijuana through administrative action, which they worried could, at best, impede access for patients if the DEA decided to reclassify the drug as Schedule II. Though various politicians, such as Tulsi Gabbard and cannabis advocacy groups like Normal, supported the lawsuit, industry experts weren't surprised by the action as less than 1% of petitioned cases are taken up by the high court. Though disappointed, activists are optimistic the legal action will set the stage for future progress on the matter, and in fact, another suit against the DEA over the same issue, filed in May by a coalition of scientists and military veterans, is still underway. In California, the United Food and Commercial Workers Union continues to expand its presence in the regulated cannabis industry as employees of the Steezy Mission Dispensary in San Francisco ratify a labor peace agreement. After three months of negotiations, staff of the Shrine Group-owned store voted unanimously in favor of the contract, which includes wage increases, employer-provided health insurance, and employer-sponsored retirement savings accounts. The local chapter of the union represents hundreds of marijuana workers across the San Francisco Bay Area, with the broader organization serving more than 100,000 employees in the cannabis industry nationwide. While many have been critical of the labor union's efforts to increase their political influence in the marijuana sector, they have nonetheless managed to make significant gains in the legal markets of states like Massachusetts and Illinois, as well as in certain areas of Canada. In Mississippi, Republican Governor Tate Reeves signs legislation allowing patients to receive FDA-approved cannabis-derived medications ahead of the state's vote on MMJ legalization in November. Under the new bill, federally authorized marijuana medicines, such as anti-seizure CBD treatment Epidiolex, will be removed from Schedule 5 of Mississippi's drug code. While the modest policy change will improve access for a small percentage of those in need of medical cannabis products, reform advocates suspect the move could could hurt momentum for the broader legalization effort by misleading voters into believing medical marijuana is readily available. Ballot Initiative 65, backed by activist group Mississippians for Compassionate Care, would let doctors prescribe MMJ for 22 qualifying medical conditions, including cancer, PTSD, and chronic pain. It faces opposition from a competing ballot measure put up by the state legislature, which industry experts see as restrictive and open to interpretation. Despite the attempts to thwart the more expansive legalization measure, its chances of passing look favorable, as recent polling indicated 81% of respondents support general legalization, with more than 50% preferring Initiative 65 over the alternative proposition. 
In the entertainment sector, another celebrity enters the CBD space as cannabis giant Kronos Group partners with actress Kristen Bell to launch a line of hemp-derived bath and body care products. The Toronto-based company and Michigan-born TV and film star, known for her role in Disney's animated blockbuster Frozen, launched the skincare brand, dubbed Happy Dance, with an emphasis on quality and affordability. Three plant-based products will be initially available, including a body butter, coconut melt, and bath bomb, ranging from $15 to $30. 1% of the proceeds from Happy Dance online sales will go to a New Way of Life Free Entry Project, an LA-based organization which provides assistance to women rebuilding their lives after prison. The new products are currently available on the brand's website. In finance, adult-use cannabis consumers in Maine spend nearly $95,000 on the state's first day of legal sales. According to preliminary data from Maine's Office of Marijuana Policy, retailers reported more than $250,000 in total sales over the long Columbus Day weekend, generating approximately $25,000 in sales tax. Product shortages, purchase limits, and high prices were observed during the state's recreational cannabis sales launch, which came four years after residents voted to legalize it back in 2016. While there were long lines and customers traveling from neighboring states like New Hampshire, business owners worry supply issues stemming from a lack of testing facilities, with only one currently available to service the entire state, could impact their ability to meet the strong demand. Three more of Maine's nine licensed dispensaries have yet to open in the towns of Nuri, Damariscota, and Poland. Experts predict the state's adult use market could reach up to $325 million in annual sales by the year 2024. In Canada, Alberta's government removes certain cannabis store ownership restrictions in an effort to create new business opportunities in the province. The Alberta Gaming, Liquor and Cannabis Regulatory Agency is lifting the 15% ownership limit and 37 dispensary cap, allowing larger players to expand their retail footprint within the two-year-old market. The original limits were meant to give smaller companies a chance in Alberta's adult use industry, which, according to the AGLC, the policy achieved. Though some business Business owners worry the change could enable corporations to monopolize sales. Others hope the minimum mandated distance of 300 meters between shops will prevent that from happening. Alberta has currently issued licenses to nearly half of all approved stores in the country at 527, with no plans to limit their number. Officials expect the reduction in bureaucratic barriers will promote a healthy retail trade and lower product prices to compete with the province's black market. Overseas, the French government reveals details on an upcoming medical marijuana trial after facing extensive bureaucratic delays. The two-year experiment will allow up to 3,000 patients to receive prescriptions for GMP-certified MMJ products, which will be provided by participating cannabis companies free of charge. The country's Ministry of Health and Solidarity will oversee the execution of the program, as well as determine qualifying conditions, types of authorized products, and specific transport, storage, and distribution procedures. While federal officials say the experiment will be dependent on foreign suppliers, particularly those from North America, they also emphasize the importance of establishing domestic production. The announcement comes in response to insistence from legislators who approved the program a year ago and expressed worry the country is falling behind the rest of Europe. A budget must now be approved by the French Parliament before the trial launches in March. And that's all the news we have for you for now. Tune in next week for more of the latest headlines with Cannabis Newsroom, your most reliable source for anything and everything cannabis.